All right, today we're talking all about the near perfect control round that we had versus Toronto. It was, I think, our fastest control round uh, that we had all season, and it came all the way back at the stage five qualifiers on hotel control. You know, there was a lot of times on hotel control where we were playing up against Toronto, and we would just be trading these quick, fast offense battles. You probably remember the one from uh, Major Three, but it was really funny always against that team because they played super aggressive, just like us, uh, and they were able to really capitalize on any three or four downs and really cap those points. Uh, super quick like we are able to uh, in this clip. So I'll start off here with the full round and the team comms overlaid over so you can really get in the mind of what the players were thinking uh, in the middle of the round and then we'll go on and do a full breakdown of everything that happened uh, in this quick one. I'm gonna chop off my bed. I'm gonna chop off my bed. We could do whatever though. We could still go A. We could go B. I'm, I'm done for anything. Uh, let's do B break. Look here. Yeah, right, right, right. Tell the big guy. I'm gonna I got top right. Pay attention at the points red, because he might be low right point. He did that once. My heart's on him, my heart's on him. He's got it, he's got it. Info! Info, 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 info. that's a guy. No, D1, 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 Last guy's probably at He's going to be pitching top at fast, I promise. Like, plat or top. Okay, okay, okay. I'm ironing plat, I'm ironing plat. Yeah, he's top it, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, top it, top it, top it. I got you, I got you, I got you. He's dead. They're going to be mid-map, they're going to be mid-map. Main, D1, 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 Maybe mid map. I'm watching. Yeah, our couches, couches, couches. 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 I'm watching. I'm watching here. I'm just saying. Couches dead. All right. First guy. Hicks. Hicks. Catwalk. Catwalk. Hicksy. You just triple cycle. One shot. I'm watching Platt. I'm watching Platt. I'm in. I'm in. Hey, he, nah. No, he's going back to. He's going yeah, back to. He's going to go on our catch. He's going to go on our catch. Could be late lurking, but he could be. One could be couches or doubles or something. Trying couches. Okay. He's all work this one with me. I'll work. I'll work this one with you. I don't see anything doubles. Nothing bricks either. I'm gonna work this one with you. I don't see my We're blocking, we're blocking white, by the way. In white, in white, in white, dead. Last guy, Hicksy is in kitchen. Shit, I'm blocking, I'm blocking, stack, 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 I have nice our guys. Good it's fucking good, uh, baby. Nice. Good good All right, so you heard the play call. We're going with our B hit. Uh, so we're sending three guys through the bedroom and top bedroom, and one guy through mid uh, who will end up going towards L, helping them out there. And we're challenging the right side. We're challenging everywhere. And because we have so many people overloading the site, you know, the max that they would send is two to three. They actually end up sending three here and still get uh, completely busted by it. So it was actually pretty easy to get B off the break if you won that break and then ended up having your, your teammates spawn low haul here. You know, if you can get that numbers advantage where you're actually piling uh, more people than the opponent team towards that B site, uh, you can really stick that spawn and then just continually cycle people through and keep respawning close to the hill so that you can continue that man advantage on that point and keep spawning there. So as you see, they send three people towards this B site. We hit our attacks and then just completely collapse from all angles. Uh, one bottom bed, one top bed, and one uh, that's going to chow L here. We actually get a clean kill on this first guy, double teaming him. Kleenex is completely caught out, single out by our team. And now we have a 4v3. The trades are going to go down. And as you see here, Brandon gets two, but Scrap does get the trade onto Kyler. Uh, and he's actually going to get another one onto Brandon. Uh, but that actually gets traded out by Dan. So because we're stacking all of those players, players towards that site we end up winning the trade battle because we have that man advantage and we're actually able to stay alive with two guys left there uh, rather than just one and then we call out as you heard in the comms last guy Hixie uh, and we know that he's playing towards a because they're not going to send four people towards the b site and now as you can see the placement of the players uh, there was a slight you know squad spawny type spawns on hotel control uh, specifically after like the mid-season update and you can see here they have their one guy towards a side we have two guys towards b side so we're going to start anchoring this spawn here and starting to spawn people, you know, low halls or back bed. And since their last guy alive was a side, they're actually going to spawn all the way back here, you know, towards this glass satellite area. So super beneficial spawns here because we win that clean break. And because their last guy alive is towards a, we killed the rest of the guys on B. Uh, we're going to have really favorable spawns going into this push. So as you see here, we start pushing onto the point. They're starting to spawn bricks now. Hixie is trying to flank through the catwalk to first try and block the spawn before any of us spawn there and also see if he can get any sort of kills uh, from anyone that might be still continually going towards that B site. Uh, and as you see here, we spawn low hall. They get another, you know, back P2 spawn here. It's really, really unfortunate for them uh, because they all died towards that B site that they're spawning out now and we're all spawning super close. So, so as you'll see here, number six is gonna try and make a play through the back bedroom 
bedroom, but because we've already spawned up here and because it's two guys, they're actually going to be able to teamwork him super well. And Shotzi, because he knows that the timing of the guy spawning, he can now take a free route onto back spa into the back P2 and try and kill anyone that might be trying to reinforce through P2 or through the main lobby because they're going to try and, you know, get back to the point and contest it because we're already on the point. So one could say, you know, why does he not just stack the point with Dan here? Why is he actually taking a route? You know, wouldn't it be beneficial to actually just, you know, play the point uh, and stack it with your teammate? You know, that is sometimes the case, but because of the callouts and the minimap, he knows that they're spawning, you know, back bed, low hall here. So he can trust them to start reinforcing the hill while he actually takes a little bit of a risk to try and get a kill to actually, you know, really secure this round and really secure that point specifically. So as you see here, Hixie trying to make a play in the back. He actually starts shooting at Brandon, but Brandon is able to get away. I don't know if intentionally he falls through the glass, but he does set it up for Kyler to get that easy trade. As you see, number three killing number six right there. And while that happened, as you can see, and has already made it to the P2 stairs. So as you'll see here, he's looking, he actually sees number eight cross, and he's also able to get this kill on number seven. So he relays that to his teammate, number one, Dan Gosi, who had just pushed onto P4 to help out and get that trade. So now another two down for Toronto. They're still spawning out because we are blocking spawns through this back spot area around here. We know last guy live is scrap here based on the kill feed. So now what we can do is start stacking the point. Kyler, since he's already top bed here, goes and makes the play to wrap around two couches to kill scrap here. Now we got three down. Down. we know that they're still spawning bricks we can fully hop back on the point as you see ant who was in main lobby rather than going you know for another spawn kill let's secure this point now because we already have two on the point he makes the third and now we can really set up a nice push because we know since they're spawning out they're not going to be obviously contesting b once again so we can have a really controlled break onto the a point and really take our time actually working it and while we're triple stacking this point kyler is already making a play towards that a site to see if he can get that early control onto that a site maybe get a kill or two and really hold you know the kitchen spawns for us but unfortunately he does get picked out from hixie here who picks up the catwalk so it was a good risk by kyler to actually take it unfortunately he does die uh, there was no point you know going back towards that b site to actually stack it we were already going to cap the point so for him it's just you know let's take a risk to try and get some map control elsewhere so now since toronto spawning close to a they're going to get in a, a default setup uh, that a lot of teams would do where they're trying to just you know hold all of their bases see if they can get a first wave and then really start trying to pile it on taking a little bit more map control but for the basis stand Standard. you know if you don't know where that push is coming from you kind of have to spread out your resources and play your lanes and then actually help each other off of those lanes uh, with complementary positions and I don't know if you remember in the comms during this moment uh, Shotzi is going to be trying to work the back and he actually comms to the team you know someone worked the back with me and I think he actually repeats it because he knows that he, he has a teammate to work around with him uh, they can really get a nice first blood on someone that might be playing towards the back and really open it for the rest of the team to actually converge onto that A point and that's a really important call as you see here he's going to start to work the back Dan starts to come towards P2 with him and from this we have a break setup where we have one guy who just spawned Kyler he's going to be trying to work the kitchen maybe get a kill there but really uh, the most important kill is killing this guy kitchen because if you can kill him uh, you can start opening these you know kitchen spawns up for your team so really big 1v1 here and then Brandon is going to be working the middle of the map and then Dan and Ant are going to be trying to work the back here they know the tendency that once teams give up that B point and start playing that default setup that they're going to have someone watching the pinch uh, from white here so they're really going to be trying to teamwork him right now so the first kill to go down in this break is Brandon on scrap scrap probably just gets a little too eager and Brandon probably hears him and he can get this easy free pick on this guy top catwalk this is a really important kill because if he's able to get this one uh, while not being able to get traded by number eight here it's really good for our team because we can actually converge onto number eight using teamwork but what actually happens here is he kills number five scrap and then he goes towards beacon and actually angles uh, number eight himself and gets a two piece to open up this whole beacon middle of the area towards this a point and this this is just huge like it completely breaks the entire corona ultra setup because the rest of the two guys are completely split apart and now if we teamwork number seven like we should uh, we'll have three kills and the last guy will be a live freezer so i'll show you this nice two piece he gets that kill on scrap he ends up going to just chow number eight kleenex dies so huge two piece by brandon maybe you can make the argument you know kleenex should have been instantly there for the trade but you know he doesn't know where the rest of our team is breaking from so you know going for that trade if there were two of our guys there or three of our guys there it had just been an instant you know death on his part and probably a mistake but he's just trying to play an off angle one-on-one -on -one. you know he could have probably picked a better spot. So I'll rewind to show you the teamwork towards this white side. And as you can see, Shotzi trying to use a little cheeky angle to see if he can kill anyone uh, that might be peeking through these glass windows towards a white. Unfortunately for him, Insight is laying prone here. He probably knows about this spot. Uh, so he's completely hiding himself from it. 
But what's going to happen here is Dan is actually going to completely rip Insight off of this Heady. He actually doesn't even need the teamwork from Ant at this point. You know, Ant could have probably tried to, you know, jump across, really bait himself out for Dan. But Dan actually just completely rips Insight off of this Heady. That's a three down. We know the last guy is Kitchen because Kyler is in a gunfight with him. And Kyler is also going to win the gunfight. So one of the main things you never want to do in control is go three or four down. That is a complete death sentence, especially if you're on the defense if the enemy team on offense can get a three or four down they get complete map position they can start sacking the point and now you have to rush back as soon as possible you can't even check any of your corners you literally have to go straight to the point and most of the time it's already capped before you're even able to get there so biggest no-no of control never go three or four down prolong your life as long as possible so you know keep that map control can prolong your life what you never want to see is four down in the kill feed uh, you can actually see it you know completely fading out there but the fourth kill is there if you can capture all four kills in the kill feed like that you know offense is basically winning every single time as long as they have the team to stack the point and what you're going to see here is our three closest guys number three number four and number two are going to go stack the point dan is actually going to go towards white first uh, to keep blocking this white spawn you know any close spawns that might have happened you know back p2 or over here uh, so anyone that is reinforcing the hill is coming all the way back from back spa so they are taking a complete journey to get back onto the hill so as you heard we're calling out hixie last live because of that counting remember the counting video uh, we know he's the last guy alive for the team we get that fourth down and now you have those three guys stacking the point like i said dan is going to go white just block it for a little bit of time so this last guy spawns up uh, towards this spot area and look at this now triple stacking he's gonna end up getting one kill uh, in this white area on one of these guys trying to reinforce through satellite here but the thing is you know these reinforcers have zero time to actually check you know white or any of their corners because they have to get to the hill and then dan is gonna call out that he's gonna go stack the point with them we get a four stack and it's a complete round win we only lose three lives for it so i'll just play this out for you guys as you saw there pretty much a perfect round of control you're not really gonna see anything better than that especially on hotel offense what you really want to do is just maintain that pressure with the spawns on the b site and then you know get that three or four down as soon as possible and then instantly stack the points it is able to be done a lot of teams have been able to do it we actually had it done on us uh, by toronto in another match uh, so it is possible it's just you know super unlikely because you really have to get all those kills uh, down in a super quick manner and it is really cool to see when it does happen because of how rare it is but it is possible with some good teamwork we had some really good teamwork in that round uh, so thank you guys for watching Watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this full-on breakdown, you know, whether it was the comms, whether it was the breakdown. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, what we were doing here in this round because it was really pretty to see. You know, I couldn't help myself. I was clapping towards the end of the comms. You might have heard it uh, in the background noise, but thank you guys for making it to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I will see you guys in the next one.